so we're back with another one today i'm back to doing art enough about me if you've watched those videos and got to know who i am a little bit i hope you enjoyed it if you haven't there's a link right there make sure you check it out but today we're gonna do a beautiful painting i call her purple rain i hope you guys like her i'm gonna teach you how to do the most easiest simplest watercolor curly hair ever like it is the best way to do it for beginners and people who are just getting into watercolors you know a lot of the times we look for videos on youtube trying to figure out how to do something specifically but it's like i don't have any experience so this is going to help you especially if you have no experience so stay tuned and i hope it is helpful to you so these are the materials that I used. I have my paint brushes, mechanic pencil that I get straight from the dollar store, a whole pack of them for a dollar. They're amazing. My Artesia pencil crayon, my Mission watercolors, and my watercolor paper. This is how Purple Rain looks before I paint her. If you guys want to see me do a full drawing from beginning to end, let me know in the comments below. Let's get into Purple Rain. Here she is with her undertones, reds, purples already laid down, and I'm going to build on top of it with brown. I'm basically just going to keep repeating this laying down brown on top of purple until I build the shade that I want. So when you're working with watercolor, you have to remember that the first um, application of paint is not going to give you the color that you want. You're going to have to keep building on top of it to get your desired shade accentuating the nose and eyes are very important because they really bring your painting to life so you're gonna want to get your smallest paintbrush to be able to apply those minor details because those are what really builds the face I'm adding another shade of red on top of the brown because I wanted her to have a bold reddish look to her so this is how she looks after she's been painted, her eyebrows are not done yet, but that's okay. Clearly you can see here that I've added all the details. So I've given her some lashes, I've used my ink to create the eyebrows, and just outlined certain aspects of her face that needed to be accentuated. And please excuse the shaking of the table. Don't shake unless you're ready to get shook. The reason why the table is shaking like that is because the way I had my camera mounted was not the smartest and every time I would apply pencil crayon and do that back and forth motion it would also shake the table without me realizing that it's also shaking the camera so please excuse me. I'm using watercolor pencil crayons here. I did not mention that earlier, but with those, I'm going over them with my wet paintbrush and I'm allowing them to kind of smooth over the pencil crayon marks. And these work really well with water because they're watercolor pencil crayons. So here's where you're going to see me jack up my eyebrows because I forgot that I used an ink that bled into water. A lot of inks that you can buy are, I don't know if it's alcohol or water based, but one of them allows you to work with water and the other doesn't and this one did not. Here we are to the feature presentation, the hair. This is what most of you guys tuned in for and so here I'm getting right into it. I've laid down some water because I wanted to use the wet on wet method when it comes to bigger areas. It just helps your water and the paint bleed nicely together. So I'm laying down lots and lots of water 
and then I'm going over that in a circular motion with my purple. I do not mix my purple first, I literally just lay it right on top of the water that I've laid down. And I'm going in a circular motion because that helps to create fluffiness within the hair. And you know when it comes to curly hair, it's very fluffy. You don't want to go in up and down straight strokes because this is not straight hair. We want to create that kind of fluff and oomph. You know what I'm saying? You're going to keep repeating that and building on top of the purples because well depending on the shade of purple you're trying to go for the more you add the more you build the deeper it's going to be so I just basically keep doing that in my circular motion I leave some areas lighter than others because I enjoy the type of dimension or definition or whatever fancy word you want to use for it I enjoy what it looks like when you don't completely covered the whole entire thing in the same shade it basically just helps with the fluffiness of the hair when you leave some areas darker and some areas lighter it just creates that kind of what is the word I'm trying to find oh my goodness I'm gonna stop talking for a second so you guys can just watch me cover the entire hair area with the purple and I'm gonna keep repeating it and going over it and building on top of the purple and leaving some areas lighter than others as I mentioned before. So now our base purple is done and laid and slayed to the side. Anyways, okay. So I'm going in here doing another layer of purple because some areas I want to be a little bit deeper than others. As you can see, I'm laying some water down on top of the purple and just basically building darker spots in the hair that I wanted to create a little bit more depth in. Here's where you're going to want to get your medium size paintbrush, medium to small size paintbrush and use it to create your squigglies. Squigglies are so easy to make and I know that doesn't sound like a technical term, squigglies, but that's exactly what they are. All you're doing is taking your purple again and just creating squigglies all through the hair. So you want to make sure that your base purple is dry before you do your squigglies and just do short strokes repeatedly in order to create the look. And then it ends up looking like this. Voila! Well, she looks so adorable. Oh my gosh. Anyways. Okay, I have my really, really tiny paintbrush here. And I use that to do my edges. Make sure they are looking slayed and laid to the side. And there you have it. Purple Rain in her truest form. Look at her glowing. I didn't mention that I left a lot of white spots just to allow her to have that natural glow because she's got that daily skincare routine on point. Your girl does not need a facial. She don't need no masks. She doesn't need nothing. She just naturally glows like that. 
All right, enough of that. Purple Rain is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to follow me on all socials at Gerda Creates. Like and subscribe and let me know what you would like to see next. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a good day. Thank you.